Hi, in this video, we will see how the uncertainty in the system affect our controller when we design a controller. So the outline of this video could be summarized like this. We have a physical system and we will use two cards connected by a spring. This system has uncertainty. So we know the parameter of the system, but not for sure. So we will model the system based on the differential equation and then we will drive the state space model of the system and then we will design a controller which is we will use the simple controller state feedback controller based on the pull placement and we will simulate the system using the script file in the MATLAB so the objective is we will use the nominal value of our system and then we will design the state space uh, and the state feedback controller and then we will assume there is uncertainty in this parameter and we check whether this the controller is still stable even if the system has uncertainty or not so let's start with the modeling so you have two cards each card has mass and there's a spring between these two uh, masses and there's a force subject to the first mass and we are interesting to control the position of the second mass so the system consists of two uh, frictionless, so we don't have any damper and they're connected by the spring and the input to the system is the force and we are trying to control the position of the second mass or the second cart now based on the second law Newton second law we could see that the differential equation of the system is the following so we will uh, we will drive the equation around or related to the first mass and the second mass separately so for the first mass so the force in the mass equal to the force applied to the system and the force comes from the spring and uh, in order to drive the state space we need to rearrange the equation in this form so this is x1 double dot and the remaining uh, move to the other side for the same way we will uh, drive the equation in the second mass so the force in the mass which is the mass 2 multiply by the acceleration x2 double dot equal to the force that transfer from the first mass so it's k the spring uh, constant and the difference between x1 and x2 and also we will rearrange the equation to be in this way now based on these two equation we will drive the state space model of the system so the state space of the uh, in general the state space equation uh, has two equation the first one is the dynamic equation so x dot is a multiplied by x plus b multiplied by u x dot is the derivative of the state x is the state of the system u is the control input a is the uh, dynamic matrix and b is the input matrix y is the c multiplied by the state plus d multiplied by u we don't have any d so we don't have this term and c it's just represent what is the output of our system now based on these two equation we will we could have this state space model so for example the relationship between we have four states the position and velocity of the first mass and the velocity and position of the second mass so these are the four state we have now uh, the relationship between x1 dot so the derivative of the state and the state what's the relationship between x1 dot and x1 there is no any relationship so we put zero now what the relationship between x1 dot and x1 dot itself so at one what the relationship between x1 dot and x2 there's no any relation so we put zero and the same for uh, x1 and x2 dot now for x1 double dot we have this equation so we could say what's the relationship between x1 uh, double dot and x1 so it could say this is x1 and this is x1 double dot so the relationship is minus k over m over m1 and there's no relationship between x1 dot double dot and x1 dot because we don't have damper so we put zero now what the relationship between x1 double dot and x2 it's k over m1 so we put it but there is no relationship between x1 double dot and x2 dot so for the same way you could see how we could obtain this one now for the input to the system u so we say that the force is the input to the system so this is the input of the system now you could say that the, the force only appear here in the x1 double dot 
which is the coefficient is 1 over m1 so just for the x1 double dot we have 1 over m1 and the remaining is 0 so this is how we build a and b now in order to find c because we are interested in control x2 so c is y is 0 0 1 0 because we don't we are not interested in x1 and x1 dot but we are interested in x2 so we put 1 but we are we are not interested in x2 dot so that's how we build our state space that we need it when we will design the state feedback controller now our controller is the state feedback controller so the control law is designed based on the following u which is the control law is kr which is forward gain multiplied by r which is the reference input minus kx multiplied by the state of the system x so x kx is the vector of the state gain and kr is the scalar which is the forward gain and kx is feedback gain now if we put this in the original equation this one so we put instead of u we put this one so we will end up to have this is the closed form of the system the, this is the closed form of the dynamic of the system with the controller now we know that a and b and c or like a and b we cannot manipulate these a and b because it comes from the system so the designer cannot change it the designer is only can change or set kx and kr in order to change the dynamic of the system so using MATLAB we have a command place to put the kx uh, to put uh, the the pool of the system because this term represent the pool of the system the eigenvalue of this matrix represent the pool of the system so we could change or set kx in order to find the desired pool that we want so first we will decide what the pool the location of the pool and then based on that and a and b we could find the value of the feedback gain x kx now also in the matlab there is a command called dc gain we could use this gain in order to see how much there is error steady state the offset between the output and the desired output the input to the system and based on this dc gain we will find the value of kr and we plug it to the system so be based on these two command we will have the kx and kr and then we will establish the closed loop system with the controller now what's the problem as we said in the beginning the problem is the value of mass 1 and mass 2 on the spring is not known exactly so for example i know it's around 10 or 2 but it's not exactly so it could be 10 or 11 or 9 or 10 point uh, point 0.5 so I am not sure exactly so there is uncertainty in this value now the question is if we design the state feedback controller based on the nominal value the, the, the they say the the value that we may be sure it's or it's around it is the system stay possible for all the value that has m1 m2 and k now in order to check to simulate the system we have two command in the MATLAB the first command is we call it u real uh, u real so we could use this one to capture the variability in the MATLAB and we will see that from the code and we have u sample to pick because with with the u real you have like too much possibility to simulate the system now with u sample you could pick whatever you want like two or three and to simulate the output now let's go to the MATLAB and see how we could design our system and check if the feedback the state feedback controller with the forward gain able to stabilize the system even with this uncertainty so in the beginning in the beginning we have like CLC clear all close all CLC to remove all the common window and we have like a clear all to remove all the value from the workspace and close all to close any window open by MATLAB now we will assume in the beginning that we know that the system is the the spring is k the spring k is 10 and the first mass is 1.5 and the second mass is 1.5 
So we will assume that we know the constant of our parameter, the value of our parameter. Now, based on this transfer uh, state space of the system, this is the state space that we will uh, use. So based on this state space, we could know what is A and B and C and D. So for example, the first row is one, 0, 1, 0, 0. So this is 0, 1, 0, 0. The second row is minus K over M1, minus K over M1, 0. So we just write down the state space. And then we convert it to G, which is the open loop system. Now let's, in the beginning, run this section to see how the response of the system is the system stable or unstable so we just run this section so we put run section now as you can see from the stable response that our system go up so it's unstable so the system without controller is unstable it's not following the command that uh, we plug in now we will jump to design the controller the state feedback controller so first as we said based on the pool placement we will decide the value of the pools the, the value of the location of the pool so it's up to you which location that you would put your pools the pools of the system so I assume that I would like to put it in minus 18 minus 26 minus 10 minus 20 and you could choose any stable pools now we will use the command place as we said before so we will put A and B, which is we know, the desired closed loop, and based on this command, we will find the gain matrix Kx. So it's a vector with four value for each state. Now, based on this equation, we know that the, the A closed loop, it's A open loop minus B multiplied by Kx, the gain that we obtain. So we just... Uh, put this equation A which is the open loop uh, A matrix mi minus B multiplied by the KX which we found it by this step now then we will calculate the closed loop just with A why we use this J in order to find the KR the forward gain so based on the DC gain now we have a DC gain in the system so we need our gain is equal to the 1 over this DC gain in order to remove this DC gain so it to become like 1 so by using DC gain we find the scalar value of KR so KR we calculated from the 1 over DC gain to the closed loop with the A with the new A A closed loop now after we find B closed loop which is just multiply the open loop B multiply by the KR then we will again uh, find the new closed loop with the feedback gain and forward gain so this is our closed loop with the controller so let's see let's see how the response of the system become after we put the state feedback controller and we put the location of the pool uh, in our desired place and also we remove the offset of the system so if we run the section so as you can see now the system is stable because we put a unit step input and the system is stable after like one one second one second or maybe 0.7 second the system is stable and it's okay and there is no error steady state now and we could see that this is the the feedback gain matrix for each state and this is the forward gain to remove the offset of the system now we finish designing the controller in a normal way now we put the question is this if we are not sure that the spring is k, the spring uh, constant is 10 or the first mass is 1.5 and the second mass, we assume there is uncertainty about 20%. So this means that could be this 11 or 9. This could be 1.6 or 1.4. And, and imagine how much probability, how much variability in each one. So if we wanted to simulate all these variability, the, the simulation become too much. So let's again build the new state space with the uncertainty and then we find the closed loop the the, the, the open loop transfer uh, the open loop state feedback the open loop state space the open loop state space with the uncertainty and then let's run the code this piece of code to see how the simulation as open loop so we are the, uh, simulate the open loop system with the uncertainty so as you can see because there is too much 
options and all of them are unstable so the MATLAB just respond to all of them now this is how we use the unreal for uncertainty now to pick up some of these we will as we will take just four simulations so we will sim simulate just four response of this uh, uncertainty in the system so if we run just this piece of code you will see that the MATLAB will just plot four response for the system with uncertainty and again we are still in the open loop so because open loop system is unstable so this is the response of unstable system now we will design the controller based on the previous section so we will assume that okay i know it's in the middle 10 on 1.5 and 1.5 which is the nominal value of the system so i will ask now if i plug this controller to the system does the system go unstable or remain stable so this is how we simulate the system with the controller and with the uncertainty now if we run this piece of code you could see now with all possible uncertainty so for example i change the value of the spring or the m1 m m2 or all of them so if you change and you put all the possibility of this value your controller able to stabilize the system as you could see so you could see that the difference is in the transit response so you have maybe one is like have overshoot or maybe like settling time change rising time however all of them are stable and there's no error steady state and everything's okay so this is how we check the robustness of our controller now we check the robustness of the controller that it's stable with all the uncertainty that has in the system now to pick like five response six response among all of these so we use u sample so we will simulate just five response uh, among all the possible solutions so this is the five that just pick it randomly and as you can see the system is still stable so that's the end of this video we take a system we model the system we design the state space model of the system and we simulate the open loop and it was unstable and then we design a, a state feedback controller based on the pull placement and the forward gain and we see that the system becomes stable and everything is okay now that we put the the problem is that maybe these value are not for sure there is uncertainty in this value and we see with the 20 percent uncertainty in this value the system is stay stable thank you for watching